Hello Internet and welcome to the Collective Arcana. We are a channel all about tabletop gaming and today I'm going to talk to you about attacks and the multiple attack penalty in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Attacks in Pathfinder 2nd Edition are any actions that have the attack trait. These include, but are not limited to, disarm, escape, force open, grapple, shove, trip, and strike. Now, strike is the standard uh, you know, action you take when you want to hit somebody with a weapon, uh, but as you've seen, there are definitely other types of actions that are considered attacks, even if you're not dealing damage with a weapon. Also, not on this list, are spells that have the attack trait. Uh, typically, that's going to be any spell where you have to roll an attack roll to hit versus, say, an enemy rolling a saving throw or the type of spell that just sort of happens or affects an area. Good thing to just you know keep in mind if you're not sure, if you haven't looked at your sheet or your action list, uh, if you're rolling a die to see if two objects physically connect, it's probably an attack. Additionally, your class uh, or an archetype may give you special actions that also have the attack trait that are you know, somewhat unique beyond these sort of standards. So let's read exactly what the attack trait says. An ability with this trait involves an attack. Each attack you make beyond the first on your turn, you take a multiple attack penalty. We'll call that MAP going forward, M-A-P, MAP. If you use an action with the attack trait more than once per, on the same turn, your attacks after the first strike take a penalty called a multiple attack penalty, the map. Your second attack takes a minus 5 penalty, and your third and any further attacks take a minus 10. There should be a little asterisk there because there are some abilities, uh, traits on certain weapons, or uh, you know, part of uh, a class that may reduce that multiple attack penalty, but this is just sort of the baseline. This multiple attack penalty does not apply to attacks you make not on your turn, such as an attack of opportunity, uh, and certain weapons uh, that have the agile trait may reduce that penalty. Additionally, some other class features or actions may uh, reduce, alter, or ignore that penalty, but they will always explicitly tell you when they do. So that's the gist of your map penalty. Now, that sounds really bad and unfun, right? Because you've got this penalty, and I just want to swing away at, at this bad guy. You know, why do I, A, have to start taking math into account to figure out, uh, you know, what my new modifiers are instead of just using the numbers already on my sheet? Well, you should have that on your sheet as well. But, uh, you know, or, you know, why am I taking a penalty? Why am I having an increased chance of failure? This is what I want to do. It's not fun. I understand that, and I get where uh, that sort of mindset comes from. And on paper, just at first glance, this looks like an anti-fun mechanic, right? Like, oh, it's not fun for you to kill the monster in one round, so you've got to start taking a penalty if you want to keep hitting the penalty. And that would be unfun if that's what the point of this was aimed at. But that's not why the multiple attack penalty survived into Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Uh, it's a completely, completely different thing. So we're going to break down sort of what function it's serving, what it's bringing to the table, and why I think that the multiple attack penalty is increasing the fun of the system and not decreasing it. So the very simple reasoning behind that is that the map penalty makes combat more engaging, especially for martial characters that otherwise, and in other versions of the game, their optimal round, uh, you know, whether it's D&D 3.0, 3.5, uh, you know, even into 5th edition D&D, certainly Pathfinder 1st edition, you very much would fall back on these positions of, okay, the best possibility for my character is to get somewhere and spend as many, as much of my turn as possible attacking. In other editions, that would be a full attack where it would take your full turn. Uh, in games like D&D 5e, you have to, you know, any action, however many attacks you have based on your class and various other factors, will determine how many attacks you can make. Um, now, 5e, there's no penalty for those, but in all those previous games, you would also have what's called iterative attacks. The multiple attack penalty is what, part of what makes Pathfinder 2nd Edition so engaging in terms of combat, especially for martial characters. Martial characters that in previous versions of the game and, you know, D&D, would find themselves in situations where the best thing they could do is roll as many attacks at an enemy as possible. Now, certainly could be effective and could be a lot of fun as well. I won't deny that. But it also would generally get 
pretty stale. It also wouldn't necessarily work with Pathfinder 2nd Edition out of the box, because they'd already made the decision to go to the three-action economy. Now, in Pathfinder 1st Edition, uh, they had, you know, sort of done uh, a version of the three-action economy that was tacked on to the existing game, uh, and that used multiple attack penalties and things like that, because they already existed and it would have been too much to change in just one book, which was, you know, the Unleashed. Now, with that said, for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, they knew that they... We're going to build everything around that three-action economy. And so, you know, you, they had to ask the question, well, from level one, how are we going to prevent people from just being able to attack three times? Well, let's keep the multiple attack penalty. That means that at low levels, when creatures have very little HP, uh, just swinging at them three times would almost certainly kill them, but by reducing the number of attacks, uh, or but by reducing the the bonus to those attacks, they're less likely to hit each time. Now, uh, other games mitigate this low level too many attacks in other ways. Uh, D&D, for example, says that at low levels, even the most martial characters can only make one attack that round unless they've got, you know, special abilities for two weapon fighting and things like that. But generally speaking, unless they are specifically designed to do it, probably only going to get a single attack per round. Now, Pathfinder, they didn't couldn't limit that because of the three-action economy, so they kept the multiple attack penalty. And with that multiple attack penalty, now you still can, from level one, attack three times if that's the best course of action for you. However, because of that multiple attack penalty, it's probably not going to be the best course of action for you. Uh, you know, once you're taking a minus 10 to your attack, or even if you're using, you know, better uh, suited classes for multiple attacks or weapons for multiple attacks, you know, agile weapons and things like that. A minus eight, maybe a minus six. By keeping the map, they're able to say, okay, you can attack three times, but it may not be the best use of your actions. Uh, and, you know, that's a limitation, I suppose, but it's also uh, more opening you up to other options. So rather than take a second attack at a minus five, or especially a third attack at a minus 10, you want to start looking at your character sheet and find other ways that you can interact with the encounter on your turn beyond just swinging away. By discouraging players and monsters as well from just standing there and taking as many attacks as possible, you're actually giving people whole new opportunities on how to use their round, things that they would never consider if there was no penalty for attacking over and over again. This just drives home Pathfinder 2nd Edition's uh, commitment to the skills and basically encouraging you by discouraging several attacks to look at your skills and see what you can do in combat with those other tools and with your class as well. It's a very clever negative reinforcement that will force players to either engage with the system better, with their character better, with the mechanics better, or perish. <laughs> And that's big because, again, with that three-action economy, if the average monster or player could just swing away their entire turn, a lot of combats would be over very quickly for good or bad. It would be extremely swingy. You know, if, a, if an ogre goes first and it's able to charge in, it may critically hit the fighter because, again, you have the plus 10, minus 10 success and failure. So if that fighter gets, that level one fighter gets crit by a D12 weapon, that level one fighter could very well go down. And now the ogre who has reach just bops over and hits the rogue. Also with no penalty at their full attack bonus. So that rogue is also gone. And now if it's, if it can reach, it might start hitting, you know, rangers or backline casters or whoever is left. And uh, even if <laughs> there's nothing left, then, you know, next round it'll swing away again. So, that's a big part of why it's there, is to keep, especially at low levels, that from getting too swingy, and again, to encourage alternative actions in combat. And this has led to a wide range of tools for both monsters. Monsters are extremely interesting to run in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, because it's not just slam attack, slam attack, slam attack. They all have unique little actions to do that have pros and cons and situations, and it really encourages you to think tactically, to try to use your monster's abilities. Um, or as players to try to think tactically to prevent setting them up for that opportunity. But the beauty of the three-action economy and the multiple attack penalty is even though you're suffering a lot of map, you may still want to take a swing. Either you're confident that 
you are still going to overpower this enemy, even with those penalties. Uh, you know, if, for example, you're fighting something and you've seen your allies hit it with pretty low rolls, uh, and you know that you're a fighter, maybe you've got the best attack bonus in the party, you're, you might go ahead and take that third swing, even though it's a minus 10, just to remove this monster from the initiative. Uh, or if you're in a situation where, uh, you know, your other tools are not going to prevent this monster from killing your friend the next round, you know, let's say you, you know, everything's played out in your mind, you know that this monster is definitely going to, you know, either run away or, you know, engage with an ally who cannot handle it engaging, and you're out of other options, then maybe, yeah, swing for the fences with that minus 10. And, but then it's drama. It's not just a rote standard thing where I'm just going to roll these three attacks. Now you've got a real dilemma on how to use your actions. And that is engaging with the system. That is building excitement where otherwise it could have been a very normal round. So what should you do besides swing a third time? Well, uh, there are all sorts of options and it will depend on your character and your build. And uh, we sort of talked about this in our little uh, Pathfinder combat demo video that we did. Uh, we'll put a link up or down somewhere for you to check that out, uh, and just so you can see some of this in play. Uh, but, uh, you know, just to go over some of the options, and this is by no means an exhaustive list. Uh, there are all sorts of them. As you go, you level up, as you increase your skills, raising your skill to new proficiency levels uh, will add potentially new actions that you can take in combat, uh, you know, different feats that you might get, either class feats or skill feats or ancestry feats, whatever, uh, are going to give you new actions and abilities that you can use in combat. But just a short list here I'll read through. <laughs> you could raise a shield. You could attempt to demoralize. Uh, you could use a single action spell. You could use battle medicine. You could hide. You could sneak. Uh, you could cause a distraction. You could take cover. You could stride or step to get to a better position or to make an enemy burn their actions to follow you. Uh, in order to continue their own attack, you could aid an ally, setting them up for success on you know some check that you you can assist them with. Uh, you can try to recall knowledge to learn a creature's weaknesses or resistances, and that's just a short a short little list. Again, there are so many more depending on how you've built your character, which skills and things that you've taken. You could have a whole lot of options that are none of those. In fact, uh, you know maybe even opening with an attack is not the way to go. Uh, you know, using a demoralize at the beginning of your turn is a great way to reduce the AC of your enemy, uh, which could lead to more hits, more critical hits, both for you and your allies. Uh, you know, you can also, you know, just use positioning to set yourself up or your ally up. You know, so even with your first action, don't, don't start attacking. Now, the good news is, you know, Stride does not have a multiple attack penalty. So, you know, you can do that first, and it's not going... Just because your attack is your second or third action for the round, as long as it's your first attack, you're not going to be taking a multiple attack penalty just because it happens to be your second or third action. So really, explore the space. Get in there. Use those actions. Move around the battlefield. Use your skills. Please use your skills. They win fights. And, you know, see what you can do beyond just swinging, swinging, swinging. A key to victory in Pathfinder 2nd Edition is... Uh, playing defensively, and one of the most defensively powerful things that you can do is rob an enemy of their actions. And if all you're doing is with your last action, instead of swinging a swing that's probably going to miss, you take a five-foot step back, you don't provoke an attack of opportunity, you force your enemy to spend one of its actions moving towards you, which means that if it's a boss enemy who has a good chance to hit even at a minus 10, they can't even try. Now they've got to, you know, they can only swing at you twice. Now we're going to get a little bit advanced, and we're going to talk, especially for Marshalls, uh, some of the unique things that Pathfinder 2nd Edition added, these sort of mechanics that can, and we talked about it in the fighter video because that's really where they uh, are most prevalent is in fighters, but these special attack actions that you can pick up through feats and things like that that are going to change the way that you interact with the multiple attack penalty and the three action economy. Now, of course, there are all sorts of things that will change how, you know, that's sort of what we've been talking about so far, is the things that you can do outside of that multiple attack penalty. Um, but these are all specifically attack actions and unique attack actions that you can pick up as part of your class or archetype. We're not going to go over all of these items. We're just going to talk about the three categories, three traits that you may see on a feat or an ability that you have besides the attack trait. The first one that we're going to talk about is an open. Uh, and then again, that'll be the little, little open trait on the... Uh, action uh, top bar the, where all the traits are. 
Uh, and so an open can only be done on your first salvo of the round. So the first time you're making an attack. You can only use an open if you haven't used an action with the attack or open trait yet this turn. Now, you know, every turn you can use a new open, but if you've done anything with the attack or open trait, you cannot use an open. This, again, does not mean that an open actually has to be your first action. It could be your second or even your third action. You just, you know, can't have used an attack or open prior. Next, we have press actions. Press actions can be used as a follow-up to an attack that you've already made. An action with the press trait can only be used if you are currently suffering from uh, an MAP penalty. Some actions with the press trait will actually grant an effect on failure. If you see this, know that it does not apply on a critical failure. Also know that if you would like to, if it's more beneficial to you, even if you succeed on that press, you can ignore the success effect and instead take the failure effect. Why would you do this? It's going to be pretty niche, but uh, the book specifically calls out a situation where you know that the weapon you're using cannot deal damage to the target. It will take no damage because it's either resistant or immune to the damage type that you're dealing. But you want some other effect that comes from the failure effect of the press. Finally, we have flourishes. Flourishes are actions that require a little too much exertion or focus to be used back to back over and over in the same round. You can only use a single flourish per round. And regardless of how hasted you are or anything like that, just because you have the action economy, you can only do one flourish per round. As an aside, we're not going to cover it because we covered it in the swashbucklers video, uh, but there are also things called finishers. These are swashbuckler only, and they are special attacks that uh, once the swashbuckler has used them, they cannot use any more attacks that round, regardless of how many actions they have remaining. They also must have panache to use it. But that's a pretty niche case. We're not going to talk about it much. It is just, you know, worth noting that there is one more common type of uh, attack trait action. Uh, now, all those little things we covered there at the end, the openers, the press, the flourishes, that seems really complicated. And, you know, if you're already feeling like multiple attack penalty uh, is already too complex, the good news is you don't have to ever use any... Uh, opens, presses, or flourishes. The only one that is not optional is if you are a monk, you will have flurry of blows. That's it. All the rest of them are going to be things that you choose to select when you're picking your feats. So if it's more complicated than you want to deal with, if you just like, I have these attacks, maybe a grapple, a shove, whatever. Great. You don't have to use them. They're totally there. But if you do want to use them, you can make some pretty fun little combos for your martial character uh, that are pretty unique and while it may put you in a situation where you feel like, you know, you have these sort of rote combinations that you always want to go for, and you could do that, you're probably not going to actually find that as an option as much as you would like. My recommendation is, if you really want to explore these presses and things like that, A, keep yourself open. Don't just try to keep doing that same cycle, because first of all, you're going to be limiting yourself uh, and not engaging with the system, and second of all, any round that you're not able to get that exact little chain of actions off, you're going to feel like you're not doing well. And that's probably not the case. As always with Pathfinder 2nd Edition, you want to build broad, not too focused. More options, more versatility is what keeps characters alive. But especially a fighter, something that gets those bonus feats. A human fighter is going to have a couple of extra feats to play with, and you could just build a couple here and there, you know, presses and opens and flourishes, and you're going to find yourself with a character that feels almost like playing like a, a fighting game where you're trying to execute certain combos. And it can be really rewarding when it works. But again, you want to have feats other than just one set of open, flourish, and press type actions. Variety is, after all, the spice of life. So uh, that's it for these actions. If you have any questions, be happy to answer them for you down below. Uh, come hang out in our Discord as well. Uh, you know, we... Talk a lot about uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition over there, and if you're having trouble with any of these concepts, uh, or you know you have some unique, fun idea for a way to take advantage of these ideas, come over and talk to us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, you know, again, comments down below. If you like the video, uh, you know, click that subscribe button if you haven't already. It really helps us out. Let's us and YouTube know that we're doing a good job. Uh, you know, so that we can better direct our content and make sure that you know we're doing what you guys want to see, and uh, you know, getting 
getting everything for you the way that you like it on the channel. That's it for me at the Collective Arcana. I'm Wyatt, thanking you for hanging out, and we'll see you next time. Welcome to the Collective. Bye.